Hi guys, so in this video, I'm going to tell you about 10 of my favorite things that you have to do in Belfast when you visit. So first up is Titanic Belfast, obviously the most famous ship ever to be built. Built in Belfast, sank on its maiden voyage on the way to New York. Uh, it was completely fine when it left us, nothing to do with us that it sank. Um, the museum itself is amazing. It's an unbelievable building. Um, when you come up to it, real class. It's like designed to be like a star, like the white star line. It was real cool, big um, wrought iron, titanic stencil out the front, really cool for selfies. Just beside the building, um, there is the Nomadic, SS Nomadic, which is one of the tugboats that took the Titanic out to sea. Um, really nice, cool area around there. You can see the actual dry dock where the Titanic was built and, and sort of launched from into the sea. Um, so a really cool way to spend a few hours. It will take a few hours because it's quite a long tour, but it's really really immersive and um, just a really cool tour and a really cool way to spend a day in Belfast. And actually in 2016, it was voted the best tourist attraction in the world from the World Travel Awards, which is sort of like the Oscars for tourism things. Um, and actually this was the first time any attraction in the island of Ireland has ever won. So go Belfast, go Titanic. So number two is Cave Hill. Now this is a bit of a hidden gem for people. Not many people who come to Belfast know about this. If you fly in, to the city airport you could probably see it in fact you probably see it if you're flying to the international as well um, it's just outside belfast city center in the north of the city belfast castle which is not a very very old castle it's quite old but that's another story the original belfast castle used to be in belfast city center there's now another belfast castle which is in the north of the city um, at the bottom of cave hill so you can get up there and park and it takes about 45 minutes, maybe an hour to walk up there, up the cave hill. Um, there are some really cool caves along the way, some nice places to stop on the way up as well. The walk isn't too hard, definitely wouldn't bring a pram. You know, young kids probably might struggle, um, depending on how fit they are, but it's not the hardest walk. But when you get to the top, the views are absolutely outstanding. You can see right all over Belfast, all over the sort of east coast. Um, of Northern Ireland, you can see Carrick Fergus up to, to Larne as well. So unbelievable sort of view when you get there and not something that everyone does when they come and stay, but something that everyone who lives in Belfast has done at one stage. So number three is St. George's Market. Now this market has been on this site for hundreds and hundreds of years. The actual building that it's now in was built in 1890. Um, it's a really cool market. It's only open at the weekends, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Probably you would say Saturday and Sunday are the best days. It has all sorts of stalls, food, local crafts, artists and stuff working in there as well. Really, really good buzz about it. And on a Sunday, it's definitely one of the best things to do in the morning because not many other places like shops and stuff are open on Sunday mornings in Belfast. So St. George's Market is, a, is an amazing place to, to go down and sort of see Get some excitement, get some nice food, soak up the soak up the beers from the night before. Um, really, really good spot. And actually, in twenty fourteen, it was voted the best market in the UK, uh, and the Queen came and visited it and everything. So, really, really good spot. And also, yes, it's only op open at the weekends generally, but a couple of times a year they do what's called the twilight market, where they open it at night, and loads of different stalls come. Loads of like restaurants that are in Belfast set up little stalls. You can get food. You get alcohol in it as well so it's a really different vibe in the twilight market but definitely definitely worth checking out the next must see stop in your trip to belfast is the ulster museum so an amazing thing to do on a rainy day and it will definitely rain during your trip to belfast so put it on your list of things to do um the museum itself is class really old victorian building built and sort of um situated in botanic gardens which are a beautiful sort of old park um it's just an amazing space amazing that place to sort of wander around it's got the tropical ravine and the palm house there real history in belfast a couple of statues as well and stuff so the museum itself is great um there's dinosaur bones there's a mummy an egyptian mummy really really cool a couple of dragons from game of thrones in there as well seriously and actually it used to house the the tapestry there was a huge big tapestry of game of thrones made um, and it was housed there for quite a long time. It's now on tour around the world. So Ulster Museum, definitely check it out. So the next must-see thing to do in Belfast is a political history tour. Now, everyone who's coming to Belfast has heard of the Troubles. 
people are either curious about what happened or people are still a bit nervous. Are they going on? Is Belfast safe? Belfast is a really, really safe city, safer than a lot of places across the world. There's no real knife crime. There's no pickpockets. It's a really, really safe city for sure. Um, but it didn't used to be. Back in the Troubles, it was really quite hairy around here. Um, and the, the good thing about the, tr the political tours now is that you can go and see, hear from people who lived in those areas during those times, can take you around all the areas that you might not know about, you might not feel comfortable to go in yourself. You can go with a tour guide, give you all the stories, all the history, um, all the sort of murals you can go to and explain who the people are on them. Um, so really, really good. It's a bit like a safari, really. So, you know, keep your arms inside the vehicles at all times and don't feed the locals. Like, that's sort of what it is. So the Troubles was obviously a serious, serious um, dark time for Northern Ireland. But, you know, we need now to, to try and flip it on its head and to use it as one of our unique selling points to the world because people are interested in it. When they come here, they want to hear about it. Um, and we need to make sure that we never go back there, but that we can teach people to come to see the lessons we've learned from the last 30 years of madness that was here. So definitely check out Black Taxi Tour of the political history and the troubles. So the next one is just our standard sightseeing tour, the big red buses you go on. Um, it's a great way to see the city. It's a small city, so you can get around it in about an hour. It takes you around all the sort of top spots, Titanic. You see a little bit of the um, murals from the political history tour, but there is not, there is very little overlap, so definitely it's worth doing both. Um, but in the sightseeing tour, you just get a better view of Belfast. You know, get up on the top deck, sit at the front under the cover, because it will rain, remember, when you're there. Um, and you just get an idea of, of what Belfast is like, you know, and it's not just the sort of main tourist streets, you're going down other little streets that people live on, and it's just a really cool way to see the city um, and to see everything that, that we have and, you know, hop on, hop off, go see a bit more of a thing that you want to see, Titanic, get back on the bus, and away you go to the next thing. So sightseeing tour, definitely worth it, definitely worth it. And right, so the next one then is full day trip. Giants Causeway or a trip up to the north coast, um, taking everything that that has. So they tend to leave from Belfast. If you're taking a bus tour, they tend to leave from Belfast quite early in the morning, 7, 8 in the morning, take you up um, Coast Road, loads to see up there. So there's the Giants Causeway, which everyone knows it's world famous. Rock formations formed by lava a long time ago. Or the truth is the giant formed it. Ben McCool, when he was trying to have a fight with some guy and some other giant in Scotland, um, so it's not just the causeway, which is amazing in itself. There's loads of stuff to do up there, all very close together. So there's Carricka Reed Rope Bridge, which is a really cool little bridge. It goes across to an island. Unfortunately, they have made it a lot safer than it used to be. It used to, there used to be proper peril when you went on it. Now it barely moves when you jump up and down, which some people find disappointing, but I think other people are happy with and disappointed in it. So not just Carricka Reed, Dunluce Castle, which is an amazing castle tumble down on a, on a cliff edge, you can get in and have a look around, it's class, real, real brilliant atmosphere right on a cliff. Um, and Bush Mills Distillery as well, which is again just quite close to that, where you get the famous uh, Bush Mills whiskey from. So a real good day, full day of sort of activity there. Um, you'll be tired after that day. Um, if you're going in the car, you know, still see all that stuff, maybe you could stop off at one of the sort of world-class beaches that are up there as well. Port Rush, Port Stewart, amazing beaches, just sand goes on for miles. Um, if you're in the bus, you're going to be whisked along a little bit quicker. You might not be able to stop for as long as you want, but whatever things you want to go see, but you'll get to see everything for sure. And at least you don't have to drive and you can enjoy the, the scenery. The next one is Game of Thrones. Now, Game of Thrones, biggest TV show in the world. Lots of it was filmed here. If you want to know which bits were filmed here, it's all the bits that are cold and all the bits that are wet and green was filmed here. Um, if it's snow, it was here. So with Game of Thrones, there's there's t loads of different tours you can go on. Now, unfortunately, there isn't one tour that does every single thing of Game of Thrones in Northern Ireland, but you can do two different ones. So one tends to go north, and that goes the north of, of Northern Ireland, and you can take in the Dark Hedges, which is that um, really iconic scene from the King's, King's Highway, or King's Road. Um, which is actually only in the show for a few seconds, but it's become like world famous and loads of people go there now to get cool photos. Um, and some other bits and pieces up in the north. 
or you can go south and you can go to the castle that they used for Winterfell, um, which is called Castle Ward. Um, and you can do some archery and stuff, get all the gear on and stuff like that. So really cool tours. Definitely worth checking out if you're a Game of Thrones fan. It's funny, I always ask people when they come to Belfast, do you like Game of Thrones? Do you like Game of Thrones? Because I personally love it. And literally it's about 50-50. 50% go, oh my God, I love it. This is why we're here. I can't wait to go and see all the Game of Thrones stuff. And the other 50% are like, never watched it. Don't care. So which one of you? Let me know. So my second to last one, is pubs you have to go to some pubs when you go to belfast um pubs all over the place different types there aren't really any touristy pubs except for maybe the crown bar which is on great victoria street facing um the europa hotel which is a really famous hotel and also great victoria street train station the crown itself is a really 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 old bar um it's got lots of little booths inside it is really cool inside the staff all were like Dicky bows and all that sort of stuff. It is a very cool place. I don't know very many local people who go in there. It is extremely popular with tourists. I don't know many local people who go in there. Um, but you can go next door to Robinson's, and that is full of local people as well. And then you can go to the back of Robinson's, um, which is called Kelly Sellers, I think, and I can't remember. And it does live live music every night which is class and it starts at 10 and it goes from being empty to being absolutely rammed within about five minutes so definitely worth checking that out other bars in belfast cathedral quarter is definitely a place that you need to try it is quite expensive but there's so many bars they're all densely packed in together and just a couple of little streets you just can't go wrong you can just go from one to the other to the next and just have a drink in one it's full of local belfast people You'll get chatting to, to people who are in there. Just a really nice vibe, atmosphere. They're all quite nice pubs. There's no dodgy sort of areas that you're going to walk into by mistake. Um, it's just a really nice, safe area for sure. And the last thing you have to do when you come to Belfast is go and eat in the local restaurants. Um, like, there's so much world-class stuff here. Now, Ireland is not just about potatoes. You know, We've got some seriously good food going on here. There's some really good places that you absolutely must try for Irish food. Um, so there's a place called Hulahans, which, you know, I didn't know Irish Irish had a food, but it does. And if you go to Hulahans, you'll get to try it. And it's really nice, amazing food, um, local stuff. It's just brilliant. Check them out on TripAdvisor, Hulahans. And we have some like Michelin star things, restaurants here as well, you know. So Michael Dean um, is one of our sort of best cooks, chefs. Um, and he has a range of restaurants. Epic is, is a Michelin star. Definitely worth checking that out. Muddler's Club is another one of my favourites that I absolutely love going to. Really, really cool food in there. Ox is another one. Real high-end stuff. Um, and then on the other side, you've got real authentic local places that people have gone to for years and years and years that are just delivering exceptional stuff at all times. So here's one for you, John Long's Fish and Chips. You would never stumble across it. It's hidden away. All the local people know about it. They've been going, my dad used to go to it when he was a kid. Um, definitely worth checking out. The best fish and chips you'll get in Northern Ireland. 100% go there. So there you go. That is my list of the 10 best things to do, in my opinion, when you come to Belfast. Let me know, have you been to Belfast? Have you done them? Leave me a comment to say whether which one is your favorite and if I've left any out that you think should definitely be on that list.